Thank you.
by day. day. He is waiting to bless every troubled soul through his son who on Calvary died. God is great. God is good. Welcome to the house of the Lord this lovely sunny day. May the Lord bless each and every one of you for coming. Amen. So I turn to sing together, to sing praises unto God. And we are singing from Exodus and Earth this morning, beginning with hymn number 653. 653 for thy goodness, O my Savior. We know that God truly is great. It's good and it's merciful. Yeah. Thank you so much for that lovely duet. Preceding that, we have the choir. They gave us Onward Christian Soldiers. And before that, we had Mike on the um, baritone solo. 
We appreciate the efforts of all the um, choir members. May the Lord bless them. Amen. For our internet audience, you are very welcome as you have tuned this way to join in the blessing of this morning service wherever you are located. It is the prayer of our heart that the Lord will bless you too. Amen. This is the Apostolic Faith Church, Bexley Branch, located on number 13, Penn Hill Road, DA5, 3EP. If you live locally or you are visiting, you are very welcome to join the service that um, we've just started a few minutes ago. Of course, you missed the prelude, but you can join in the singing together and other proceedings of the service. And if you cannot, we just pray that wherever you are, the Lord will be with you just as is with us here. Amen. The singing 653, we take verses 1 and the last of this one, verse 1 and the last one, and then a couple of more other songs. And Bram Mike is our song leader this morning. For thy goodness, for thy good. Christians seek not yet repose, cast thy dreams of ease away. Thou art in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. We take verse 1 and the last one as well, 1 and 6, sitting down after the tune. Before prayer is going to be six, nine, seven. S is an S, six, nine, seven. Six hundred and ninety-seven. We're singing verses one, two, and the last. Verses one, two, and the last. On the last verse, we shall stand up to sing it, and we remain standing to be led in prayer. That last verse is for the orchestra also will join us. One, two, and the last. <laughs>
remain standing. Brother Francis will come forward to lead us in congregational prayer. Thank you, our dear Lord and our God, Amen. our great high priest that has atoned for us. We thank you, Lord God, for the power of the atonement. Amen. This atonement avails for us in all aspects of our lives. It brings healing upon our soul, spirit, and body. It forgives us our sins and it heals us of all ailments and illnesses. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. You said it is finished. So there is nothing more for us to do other than to just accept this atonement. We praise your holy name, O Lord. Thank you that the blood of Jesus is flowing still. And this blood will avail for us all today. Sinners shall be saved. And those that are saved already, you are going to sanctify. Those that you have sanctified, you will baptize with Holy Ghost and fire. As many as are here this morning with one ailment or the other. Even those that cannot be mentioned. Those that are known to you only. Whatever the ailments may be. Lord, today you will break their backbones. You will drive them out. You will give us freedom. You will restore health unto us. And we shall glorify you. Speak through the preacher, O Lord God. Give him your unction. O Lord, let the word enter into our hearts. Let it renew your spirit in us, O Lord. Father, bring up those that are seen on their way. And our audience that may be listening over the web. Oh God, bless them too. Lord, as you are blessing us here, bless them over there too. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. scripture reading this morning. We'll be taking that from the book of Leviticus chapter 9 
verse 1 to 6. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. Verse 1. And it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said unto Aaron, Take thee a young calf for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering without blemish, and offer them before the Lord. Three, and unto the children of Israel thou shalt speak, saying, Take ye a kid of the goats for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year, without blemish, for a burnt offering. Four, and a bullock and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before the Lord, and a meat offering mingled with oil. For today the Lord will appear unto you. Amen. Five, and they brought that which Moses commanded before the tabernacle of the congregation. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. Six, the last verse. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. Amen. Amen. The
going back to the text that we shared together this morning from the book of Leviticus, the ninth chapter. I'll be reading from verse 23. Leviticus 9, 23. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. Amen. Amen. I want to pray that the glory of the Lord will fill your heart today. Amen. The glory of the Lord will descend upon this sanctuary. Amen. And may it be your personal testimony and mine Amen. on this wonderful Lord's day Amen. that our eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. Amen. It's one thing for the glory of the Lord to descend into a sanctuary is another thing for each and everyone present in that, in that sanctuary to allow that glory of the Lord to touch their hearts. Yeah. After all, distilling from our lesson of last week, which was taken from the book of Leviticus chapter 10, you will recollect that immediately after this glory of the Lord that the Lord promised that will happen, immediately it happened, then something else happened. Nadab and Abayu were part of that situation, that environment in the sanctuary when the glory of the Lord came down. But unfortunately, they did not allow it to enter their heart. And it is my prayer that as we are looking up to the Lord for his glory to descend into this sanctuary this morning, and I even want to believe because the children of God have already prayed that that should be the case, I believe the glory of the Lord is already here. Amen. I just want to pray that my heart will be opened, Amen. your heart will be opened, Amen. so that that glory of the Lord will be revealed in your heart. Amen. We want to thank God for what he has been doing in our midst. His manifestations are things that we can look back and we can say we, there's no way we, we can fit ourselves into deserving that. But out of his own love and mercy, he has decided to help us. He has decided to answer our prayers. Amen. He has decided to heal us. De decided to deliver us. Amen. And um, just have been blessing us in various ways. Yeah. Thinking about the various camp meetings that we've had, beginning with quite a great number of our people that went to Norway camp meeting. And at the end of that, we have another cohort, a good number of people that went for the um, the youth camp, and then Portland camp, and then our own camp, and then some of our people also at work I camp meeting. We thank God for all that the Lord has done. Amen. You know, I was thinking about this, and I was trying to liken it to the um, life of the children of Israel, who before now, before we go to this particular chapter in their life history, God has come down, God has delivered them from the land of Egypt, God has been leading them through his glory in the wilderness. He has shown his glory in many special ways. You will remember how God came down on Mount Sinai, where he gave his covenant to them. We will remember when God gave them the instruction to build the tabernacle, how they built the tabernacle, and at the consecration of that tabernacle, we were told that the glory of the Lord came down in such a way that the priest could not even enter the tabernacle. Yeah. So the glory of the Lord has always been coming down yes. in their midst. And I was liking this to all that the Lord has been doing for us throughout this summer. The glory of the Lord has been coming down. Amen. The Lord has been blessing us. Yes. The Lord has been answering our prayers. Yes. And I don't know what made it now at this particular junction in the word of God when God had to say to the children of Israel, we read that together in our text, if you look at verse 4 of this same Leviticus, when God said at the end of that uh, uh, verse, the last phrase there says, For today the Lord will appear unto you. Amen. Has the Lord not been appearing before? He has been. But out of his own mercy, out of his own volition, he just decided within himself, I want to appear to you again. Amen. What a merciful God we serve. Amen. We have a week of revival before us. 
We have all enjoyed the manifestation of God in all these camp meetings, in all these uh, 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 coming together, fellowshipping together, enjoy uh, the service of the Lord together. And there is no doubt the Lord has been blessing yes. in various ways, in many ways. Yeah. And now, I want to believe just as God stopped here and asked the children of Israel to do certain things, because on that particular day, he decided, I want to appear to you. I want to pay you a special visit. And I want to believe this is what the Lord will do for us this week. And the Lord will start even from now. And it is my prayer that it will not just be something that will just pass over my head or over your head. We will all make ourselves available to say, God, you have a reason for saying that we should still meet for revival time. To, you have a reason for saying that we should still pray more. You have a reason for saying that we should still continue in the spirit of revival. I want to be part of that. Amen. I pray the Lord will help you to be part Amen. of that. Amen. Because the Lord will, will bless you for doing so. Amen. God must have a reason for saying this. Yes. We thank God for those that the Lord has saved. He has sanctified. Yes. He has given his Holy Ghost baptism. Yes. He has healed. Yes. He has answered many prayers. Yes. But God from heaven in his mercy is still looking down and he's still saying, I still want to bless more. Yeah. There are some people that want more and I want to give more. Yes. There are some people that have not received and I want them to receive. Amen. A brother said to me sometimes ago, after all the camp meeting and everything, um, he came to me and he said, with all these things that everybody is talking about, this one received this, this one received this, many testimonies, he said, sir, do you know what? I didn't feel anything. I have not received anything. And God knows those that have truly not received anything. And God in his mercy is saying that I want them to receive something. It is possible that you've been hearing testimonies of people and you have been praying. And it seems that nothing has happened. Today, Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. you will receive. Amen. For God has a reason when he says, for today, the Lord will appear unto you. I was thinking, I, I stopped and I was meditating on that. He's been appearing to them in many special ways. God has been appearing to us. And today, starting from today, throughout this week, and throughout our lives, in the name of Jesus, he will continue to appear to us. You know, God's appearance is different from man's appearance. He doesn't appear and disappear. When God appears, he leaves an impression. When God appears, he does something that you yourself will know that the Lord appeared to me. The Lord did something for me. It is man that we will say that, did he come? Yes, he came and he has gone. And perhaps that's the end of it. But for God, when he comes, he comes in his glory. He comes in his beauty. He comes with something spectacular. He comes with some wonderful choices, blessings. And I pray that God will help you to receive yours today. Well, when God um, said this to the children of Israel, you know what? They did not say that, um, what appearance again is this? Why would he want to appear again? We've been seeing you. You've been coming down. You've been blessing us. Instead, they decided to prepare. Instead, they decided to do what God has told them to do through Moses. And I want to pray that God will humble our hearts so that we too will make ourselves available and say, God, whatever you want me to do, I will do it because I know you want to bless me. May we follow their steps. Amen. It's a privilege, and God is going to bless us. Amen. You know, the text that we read, that verses 1 to 6, gave the details of the preparation. God told them to draw near, to stand before him, and then to expect something to happen. To expect something to happen. Verses 7 through 21 in this chapter detailed the preparation that God would want them to make. Um, what, what is noticeable for me in this uh, um, preparation that God told them to do, some of which we touched during our Sunday school this morning, 
in the detailed offerings that God was telling them to do. Look at verse 7. That has to do with what we studied this morning. From verse 7 through to verse 14 is on atonement. Atonement for the priest uh, first, and then atonement for the people. Look at everything we talk about this morning. They've got to prepare. They've got to do that. If you look at verse 15, sin offering. Verse 16, burnt offering. Verse 17, meal offering. Verse 18, peace offering. Verse 21, wave offering. Offering, offering, offering. I, I remember when um, one, I believe, Bratoye contributing during the Sunday school was talking about all these offerings that we may not really understand them fully, but when you go into them one by one, you wonder. The, 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 the complexity, the, 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 the complications, all the things that they just have to do. But thank God, these people believed. Yeah. These people did what God asked them to do. Yeah. They did not question anything. They, you, you, you just want to watch there how something came out to me that God is particular about details. Yes. Yes. Our God is not a careless God. No. And we cannot serve God with carelessness. No. We must pay attention to details. Yes. If you just take your time to read that 7 through to 21, you will see how God was going from one offering to the other, detailing it out for them what they should do, how they should do it. And when we do what God wants us to do, if you have, um, and I will encourage you to do this, we have a devotion on our website um, from International Headquarters, Daily Devotion. The one of yesterday, I want to believe, is the one that talks about a promise is a promise. Yeah. When God promises something, he fulfills that promise. Yeah. God's promise is that I will appear to you today yeah. if you will do all of these things. And when God saw that the preparation was up to the standard, God fulfilled his promise. Yeah. God wants us to, to prepare. Because I, I, I am looking forward to something special for myself, Amen. for my soul, Amen. this special week of revival. Amen. And I want to believe you two are looking for something. Yeah. And the Lord is not going to disappoint you. Amen. The Lord will fulfill that promise Amen. that you've been waiting for. Amen. You want to take advantage of every privilege, every opportunity that the Lord is giving you. We have um, um, a, a, a kind of a catalog of history of people that prepared for a face-to-face -face encounter with God. And God did not fail them. When, when I read about some of these people, apart from the one we are, we are reading in the Bible, we have so many other ones in history that when you read about them, you say, but they are human beings. God, come and help me. Amen. Have mercy upon my soul. Amen. I want to have a face-to-face -face encounter yeah. with God. Yeah. You, you guess what happened to uh, uh, Savonarola of Italy, reading about this great man of God of the 15th century, in that great revival in Italy, in Florence, uh, uh, um, when this man decided that there must be a, a kind of reawakening. Something must happen. There must be a revival. I think it was also mentioned during the uh, Sunday school, uh, with something that I, I found to be very encouraging today, the fact that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is a very simple thing. It has been simplified. What is God asking from you and I? Can you just imagine the meat offering, the sin offering, the trespass offering, the um, wave offering? The... God is not asking for that. No. He wants us to be hungry, wants us to be humble, wants us to surrender our will, wants us to be honest. Yes. That's all. And we can get on our knees and do that. The glory of God will come down. Amen. How about Martin Luther, 16th century in Germany? These are human beings that they prepare to have an encounter with God, and God did not fail them. And you want to think of that great endurance of the persecutions of the 17th and 18th century of many Christians that just decided, I want to have an encounter with God. And once I can see God's glory, it doesn't matter what man would do to me. I don't care what persecution I will go through. 
I just want to see God's glory. Is that not what Stephen saw? As they were stoning him, as they were stoning him, and God opened heaven, and he saw Jesus Christ. That was enough for him. That's all we want to see. The glory of God in anything we are going through, in anything that comes to us. Let us always purpose the glory of God. The glory of God. How about the Wesleys? Charles Finney, White Moody of the 19th century, or the one that some of us even now know to some extent, Evan Roberts of 1904, the Welsh Reviver, or the one that even gave birth to our own church, the Azusa Street Reviver of 1906. You just want to check on what brought about all those great revivers. It has to do with people having determination to have a face-to-face encounter with God in prayer, in agonizing prayer. May God help us to pray. May God give us the spirit of prayer. Some people are looking for power to be able to do this, to be able to do that. The greatest power can only be found not in fighting or exercising this muscle, but on our knees. When we pray, power comes down. When we pray, we have power to face whatever is facing us, and the Lord will deliver us. How about the day of Pentecost? Didn't they prepare? They prepared. Jesus just told them a simple instruction. Go and prepare. You want to see the glory of God? You want something special to happen to you? You need to make preparation. You need to prepare. They prepared and they got your result. We want to prepare today. Amen. We want God to show us his glory. Amen. And the Lord will surely do it. Amen. If we have sinners, those that are yet to be saved, the Bible tells us that for all have sinned and come short of that glory of God. But something can bring them closer to that glory. Yeah. Repentance, yeah. confession of sins, Determination not to sin again will bring you to the glory of God. God will come down. He will not only just come down, he will enter your soul and you will see his glory in your heart. It is my prayer that for any sinner present here today, please, let sin go. Let sin go. Let sin go. If you can let go of your sin, you will see the glory of God. Yes. I can promise you that. Yes. Because that's what happened to me. Amen. That's what happened to me. It wasn't in a, a, a meeting like this. It was at the back of a dilapidated classroom that I just knelt down. And I was prepared to let sin go. And when I told God my sins, confessed my sins to him, and I promised him that with his power, I will not go back into them, the glory of God came into my soul. No one was there, but I knew the work was done. The glory of God shone in my heart, and I knew the work was done. And I thank God for that. Let sin go as a sinner, for saints that are looking for deeper experiences. Maybe you will remember Moses. Moses, that needed help from God at a particular time, was asking God, to uh, uh, do one thing, to do another thing, to do another thing, until it got to a level, show me your glory. Yeah. All these, you will go with me. I believe you, God. Your angel will go, okay, God. Uh, this will happen, all right, God. However, for me, I'm not leaving this place until I see your glory. Amen. For man to see the back of God. What an encounter. Can God do that for you and I today? Oh, yes. For man, Moses, we read in the Bible, he was born like you and I were born. And he prayed, I want to see your glory. Ah, because you want to see my glory? God knows what that will mean to him. God knows uh, 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 the, the, the interpretation of that glory because God said, Mm-mm, you are not going to see my face and live. But the one that you can cope with, the one that I know is enough for you, I will show you. Amen. So I will pass by, I will use my, I will cover your face, and I will pass by, 
And after I pass by, I remove my hand, then you will see my back. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. Encounter Amen. with this great God of heaven. Yeah. So if you are a saint, I don't think that you don't need that glory. You also need that glory. Yes. Maybe you are looking for sanctification. You need the glory of God. Yes. You're looking for Holy Ghost baptism. You need the glory of God. Yes. You just need to tell God that that is my own. That is what I want. You need the anointing. Be prepared for it. You need the reassurance. The Lord will do it for you. Amen. However, those that are in problems, you know, even in our problems, God shows his glory. Yes. Do you remember the three Hebrew children? When they were taking their stand, it wasn't that time that they were uh, um, that Jesus was even physically present. It was when they were in the fire. Yeah. In your fire. Yeah. In your affliction. Yeah. In your pain. Yeah. In my affliction. Yeah. In my pain. Yeah. The glory of God will come there. Amen. When the glory of God, in whichever form the Lord has decided to show it, will come down, did they feel the effect of the fire? May God fill us with his glory. Amen. May the Lord appear in your flame. Amen. May he appear in my flame. Amen. For those that are in doubt and they are not sure of their stand, they are being dribbled by the enemy here and there. Don't worry. You remember the disciples and even one of the apostles, Timothy? You remember him very well? Thomas, thank you, Thomas. Thomas, who said, unless I see, for me, uh, I won't believe but I need to see that mark. I need yeah. to see that hand. Yeah. Hey, maybe something is going on in your life and that is like, it's all bleak and gloom and doom. And you too, it's like as if unless, even though you are not saying that, but your situation is just something like that. And you believe in that. And God can see the sincerity in your heart. Yeah. You will hear peace be unto you. Amen. That's what they heard. They were still afraid. They were wondering what is going on. But all they needed was just the glory of God. All they needed was just the appearance of God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether the windows are closed, whether the doors are closed. It does, nothing disturbs God from appearing. It can appear in your bedroom. It can appear when you are in the church. It can appear when you are driving. It can appear to you anywhere. As they were still there, maybe still fearful and still afraid, it came down. Amen. Peace be unto you. Amen. May you hear that voice today. Amen. For those whose cases seem hopeless, you remember Zechariah and Elizabeth? The Bible actually described them as old and stricken yeah. in age. And it was like as if all hope was lost. And I was thinking of Zechariah on that day, as we have been studying about priests, he was a priest. He went to do his normal routine inside the temple. Maybe that day, maybe they have even forgotten praying. They, they've just taken their situation. Well, it's barren. That, that's what people know us to be. Nothing will happen. It's finished. Maybe. And, but again, again, he continued doing what he knew to do. Again, he continued worshiping God. Again, he continued serving God. Again, he continued uh, submitting himself to whatever role, responsibility, or whatever God has given him to do. And on that fateful day, he just went into the temple to do his normal run. He wasn't expecting, I, I don't know, I don't know his mind, but I believe he was just doing his own thing that he should do. Not that he went there to go and pray for himself. And the word of God says, there appeared an angel of the Lord unto him. And the angel said, thy prayer is heard. May the Lord answer your prayers. I don't know that thing that the enemy is saying is, is finished. You, you know, your own is just no hope. There is hope for you. When you see the glory of God, you, 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 that, that hope will be living within you. Of course, if we too will prepare... The word of God says that if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. May the Lord do that for you and I. 
returning to West Revival, what did Evan Robert do? A man of 26 years old. A man who was not a minister. A man who was just doing his own little thing. A man that was already filled with fire and he was able to speak to the authority of the church. C can I say something? Say what you want to say. I just want to announce that some people should please come back one hour after this normal routine meeting. Thank God some people did not say, I, I do, the, the account didn't say that everybody came back, yeah. but some people came back. Yeah. May you come back. Amen. Some people came back. Amen. They didn't say, who is this one? What was, what's, what's, Evan, we know you born in Lahore, uh, studied there, and you've been saying um, one thing or the other. They came. And when they came, what did he tell them? What did he do? He told them just three things. Three things. Number one, confess any known sin. Immediately put away any doubtful habit. Three, restore any broken relationship. That's all. That's the way the Lord put it in his heart yeah. to tell the little gathering that came back. He told them to do that. They did that. We talk about which revival today. True. Simple, isn't it? Yes. May God help you and I Amen. to take this thing very simple. Amen. You know, we human beings complicate things too much. There are some people you say, it's good for you to be saved. They're already thinking of, if I'm saved, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do it. Leave that now. Why are you allowing the enemy to be disturbing you with that? Who tells you that those things you'll be able to do in your own power anyway? To be able to do anything in terms of a, a, a satisfying God, I think it came out also even in our lesson this morning, is God doing it. Yes. Is Jesus himself doing it. Yes. And he will do it in you. Amen. In the life of anybody that you see taking his, his stand or a stand is not that person. No. Some, someone is behind that thing. Yes. And that is Jesus Christ himself. Yes. The only one that shed his blood on Calvary yes. is the one that will help you. Is one that will help me. Yeah. It is the same thing for us to do today during this revival praying week. You know, don't, don't take it lightly. Don't take, take it as something like, this is my week. Yes. This is for me. Even if you cannot come, wherever you are, yeah. join your mind, your soul, your heart with other God's children where they are gathered, yeah. and you will see what the Lord will do for you. Yeah. Don't say that we've been praying, his prayer, his prayer, his prayer, ah, ah. What else do we need? God will answer our prayers. Amen. Let us resolve to obey God. Let us do what Evan Robert said these people should do. That's all they did. That's all they did. I was looking at the first one. He said, any known sin. He didn't say unknown sin. Don't worry about, can I confess all my sins? Leave that to God. The one that you know, confess that to God. And if there is something that is doubtful, you too, you, should I do this? Shouldn't I do? Mm, if I do it and I don't do it, I, the Spirit of God will minister to your heart. Yes. Anything that you are doubting in your heart, leave it off. And then, broken relationship. Is that important? Yes. May God help us. Amen. We want to lay aside anything and everything that will disturb our hearts from being revived. Let us evaluate our relationship one with another and mend fences. Yeah. You will not see the glory of God is what the Bible says in terms of you want to see God and you don't want to see your other uh, uh, fellow human being. That won't happen. No. Mend fences where possible. Yeah. Go to that person, go and confess. Go and tell that person I'm sorry for what I've done. Or you offended me. Let, 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 let's settle this and see what the Lord will do. Yeah. Let's mend fences. Yeah. That's what gave birth to West Revival yeah. that we are talking about today. And the Lord is going to do the same thing for us Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The final part of that passage from verse 22 says, And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them, and came down from offering of the sin offering and the burnt offering and peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out 
and bless the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. I love that. All. All. If they have children there, the children will see it too. And there came a fire out from before the, the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted and they fell on their faces. Let's take off that covering. Take off that covering. Enough of covering. God wants to show you and I his glory. God wants you and I to experience his glory. And when he shows that glory, fire of God. This fire is not going to be the one of chapter 10. The one that consumed Nedab and Abihu. It's going to be a special fire. It's the one that burns all the dross. It's the one that burns all the sins. It's the one that burns all the transgressions. It's the one that burns all the iniquities. It's the one that burns all those things that are standing between us and God. That fire can come into your soul today. Amen. That fire can come into my soul today. Amen. We can set aside, empty ourselves of all our self, pride, yeah. passion, um, and whatever is disturbing us. God and heaven yeah. will come down Amen. into your soul. Amen. If we will do and prepare our hearts, just as these people did, without questioning, without worrying, without even trying to find out that God has been showing himself before, will he show himself again? Can God do that for us again today? Oh, yes. God can show us his glory. Amen. Do you feel like you want to see God's glory? Amen. Do you feel like having that God's glory shown in your heart, even though that God's glory is here right now? The altars are open. I'm inviting you to please come so that you too can have that fire in your soul. You will shout for joy and have the peace of God in your heart. Come to the altar and pray as we sing in number 485.
Lord God, bless us. As we are blessing others, bless us. We want your glory. We want your glory. Appear unto us. Save soul. Sanctify. And fill with Holy Spirit. Give us your anointing. Deliver. Heal the sick. In Jesus' name. Amen.